Beloved in the Lord, you are welcome today to the pre-burial, burial, and commendation service for Mrs. Eunice Angelina Osei Hurie. At this service, we will not do the no normal filing past. The casket will not be open, but we will have a short period of pre-burial service during which we will read a few test, a few uh, tributes and made singing from the choir. It is our hope and prayer that the Lord through this will continue to comfort those who mourn so that at the end of it we will give glory and thanks to him. So we continue the pre-burial service in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We will sing from the Methodist hymn the hymn number 427. 427. Through all the changing scenes of life, in trouble and in joy, the praises of my God shall still my heart and my tongue employ.
please be seated. Let us pray. Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, and of everything therein, we give honor and praise and adoration to you. We adore you for who you are. And we thank you for all the things that you do for us. You loved us so much that even before you created us, you make every provision that was required for our benefit. And even when we had fallen from grace, you still loved us. So you gave to us your only son, Jesus Christ our Lord, to die on the cross to redeem us from sin. We thank you for calling us to yourself through your son so that we can indeed inherit all the benefits that you had for us right from the very beginning. And Father, we thank you for today and commit ourselves to your care at this service. Beginning this service, Father, we want to give thanks to you for the life of our own beloved Mrs. Eunice Angelina Oseferia, whom it has pleased you to call back to yourself. We thank you for, his, for her life and all that he could achieve whilst on earth. Now that it has pleased you to call her to yourself, we say thank you. We have assembled here to part company with her in flesh and blood. But we want to commit her soul to you because while she was alive, she acknowledged your son Jesus Christ as his, her savior and committed her life to him. And so we commit her soul back to you for keeps. It is our hope and our prayer that your angels will from heaven descend to send her home, even as we part company. And at this service, as we part company, we pray that you, 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 you comfort us who mourn so that we will be encouraged to continue to live to your glory. So be with us, Father. Take full control of all this service. So at the end of it all, we can say thank you for what you have done. We thank you for hearing our prayer in the name of your only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us when praying to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Hands up, please. During this part, we shall be reading the following tributes in this say in this order. The first one will, will be from their in-laws, to be followed by the nieces and nephews. And then the cousins will also bring their tribute. That will be the order in which they will be read. So as we sing the next hymn, the in-laws get ready to read their tribute. And the next team is from Methodist team 428. I will praise my maker while I have breath.
now take the tribute from the in-laws. Um, the first tribute is from Gershon Nayo. Um, that would be Auntie Eunice's uh, uh, first uh, in-law, so to speak, because uh, he's the husband of uh, Patricia, who is the first child of Auntie Eunice. Auntie Eunice welcomed me to her home almost 33 years ago. I was a fresh architect from school, and she was a senior architect, so we had a common platform to have our long conversations about architecture in Ghana and Africa. She was sharp and thoughtful, and I struggled just to attempt to answer the questions she kept firing at me about all the new trends in the architecture and construction. Auntie Eunice was sweet and loving, and I was always welcome to her home, and I joyfully took advantage of that took many visits to her house. Eventually, I ended up getting married to her eldest daughter, Patricia. I have many memories of her sitting with me down to talk when I visited. Me praying and that the topic would be architecture and not marriage. Our children, Elinam and Kafui, were always eager to go and visit grandma because it was always fun time. Auntie Eunice got on very well with my family, especially Dada, my mother. We love to celebrate occasions with her, and we wish we could spend many more years celebrating milestones together. However, we are thankful that you are at rest in the bosom of the Lord, where there is no pain or sickness. Mommy, your memory will forever remain our, in our hearts until we meet again Fare thee well. Um, the next tribute would be from yours truly. My relationship with my mother-in-law, Auntie Eunice, for the most part, was a long distance one. Even though we were miles apart, she was always warm and gracious, gracious each time we spoke, either by phone or video chat. She never missed the beat and would always inquire by my siblings and my mother. Her grandchildren's well-being was very important to her and always wanted to know how they were doing. I had the opportunity to meet with her the first time in 2007 when she visited Rosemary, myself, and our three boys in the U.S. My earlier impression of her was confirmed during her visit. Her gentle and welcoming nature made it easy for me to bond and have a closer relationship with her. She was a class act and will be sorely missed. Rest in peace, Auntie Eunice. And the third and the last tribute from Auntie Eunice's in-law would be from Carol Osefer. And this says, Mommy, I remember the first time I met you and how you welcomed me and made me feel a close part of the family. There was never a day in the 23 years I knew you that, that we had any disagreements. I was, and still I am, so proud to say I had the best mother-in-law. Your kindness, beauty, gentil nature, inner strength, and love for your family will always remain with me. I'm so grateful to have had you in my life and will forever hold you in my heart. Rest in perfect peace, your daughter-in-law, Carol. Thank you. In heavenly love abiding, no change my heart shall fear. The next hymn after which we shall take the tribute from the nieces and the nephews. MHB 528.
the nieces and nephews to present their tribute. Good morning. I'll be reading the memories of our aunt. There are a lot of us, so I'll just take a few lines from everyone. We'll start with Kojopein and Ousua. Auntie Eunice was one special family member who had a very interesting way of interacting with her nieces and nephews. She always welcomed us to her home and encouraged us to be kind to everyone. She also encouraged us to be disciplined and confident in everything we did, especially when we were growing up. I remember back in the days in Adabraka when she always sat by the window overlooking the Presbyterian church. There, she saw everyone who passed, especially family. If you didn't go in or look up to say hello, you were sure to receive a call or a message letting you know she saw you pass in front of her house. I know I'll continue looking up your window to see if you are watching. Rest well in your maker's bosom. This from Anna, Kobi, and Jacoba. Auntie Rufa, I will always treasure the many afternoons I spent at your home with my children over the years. I look forward to our conversations filled with laughter and a lot of titty, men year off. It was so easy to make you laugh, and I so enjoyed hearing your sweet laughter. Auntie Eunice's peaceful yet strong presence was always certain to leave a lasting impression. She always showed up honest conversations, laced with sage advice, and had a wonderful knack for relating a memory with a twist of humor and wisdom. Auntie Rofa was sweet, cheeky, and special. We shared many precious moments together, and I always looked forward to my time with her whenever I was in Accra. She also looked forward to the naughty and nice treats I often brought, and as much as I enjoyed seeing the excitement with which she received them, she equally enjoyed indul indulging. Rest peacefully in the Lord, Auntie Rofa, till we meet again, you are sorely missed. This is from Iresi, Iroquois, Kofi, Payne, and Kakra. I will remember the many times we eloped from home, first in Cape Coast and then in Accra, to stay at Auntie Rofa's. She would simply telephone our parents when we lined up for dinner that we had decided to set camp at hers. Auntie Eunice was a strict disciplinarian, but had a great sense of humor too. People often ask why we share such close relationships with our cousins. I think that it is because depending on location, we always had moms and dads and not aunts or uncles. So at Cape Coast and Cantonments, Auntie Rofa was mom and in charge when we're 11 or 14 or full squad. Whether it was a planned vacation or impromptu sleepovers that we had tricked our parents into having, Auntie Rofa would always make sure we all had clothes to sleep in and toothbrushes in the morning. They were adventure and fun-filled holidays with our cousins at Cape Coast and Accra. Auntie Rofa, thank you so much for the love, care, and advice. I have very fond memories of Auntie Eunice or Auntie Rofa as we used to call her. First from Cape Coast, then later at her home in Cantonments. She would always ensure we were comfortable and fuss about what we wanted to eat. I fondly recall her rich, deep female toned voice. I will never forget her catch, catchphrase in Fanti whenever our cousins Oti or Nana were caught in mischief. She would retort sternly, Hey, me yaz jinjen biawoho. Auntie Eunice, thank you for all the good times you gave us. Until we meet again, Rest peacefully in the arms of our Lord and Savior. And this is from Senna, Della, Emifa, and Edim. 
My dear Auntie Rufwa, I will always cherish your wise counsel every time I visited you after school, as you were only a couple of minutes from our school gates. You were patient, hospitable, and always eager to find out how I was doing academically. Thank you for always being there and for making us feel welcome. I really miss your infectious laughter. We were so looking forward to seeing you again, but the good Lord had other plans and called you home. Though we are very sad, you are no longer with us. We are thankful for the 90 glorious years he blessed you with. Rest in perfect peace unto you, Eunice. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. MHB 422. After which the cousins will pay their tributes, and that will be, be the last. invite the cousins to present their tributes. So I bring you memories from the cousins. And I have two tributes here. One from a cousin that is so close that we have all known her as a sister and then also from another who is actually a niece, but also because of her age and the closeness with our mother, 
we don't know her as a cousin. So I take, read a tribute from Dorothy Saki. My beloved sister, your home calling brings mixed emotions. We confess our thanks, but also our sadness. We thank God for the beautiful life and the blessings God bestowed upon you. The loss is so profound and the pain is deep. I miss you so much. I miss our long chats. Your love and kindness always warmed my heart. Thank you for being my mentor, big sis, and always making sure I am okay. We take solace in the fact that you are now at peace and resting in God's bosom. Sis, your light will shine. You will forever re remain in our hearts. Rest in peace, your beloved sister, Dorothy Rose. And then the tribute from Auntie Kukwa. Sister Rifwa, you are one of my favorite aunties. Thank you for all the advice and encouragement you gave me whenever we met. I cherish the time we spent together when we were young during vacations in Cape Coast. May your soul rest in peace till we meet again. Amen. And that brings us to the end of the pre-burial service. Shall we all stand as we begin the main service? God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lives again, so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last and the living one. I was dead, and see, I am alive forever and ever, and I have the keys of death and hate. Brothers and sisters, the hour is coming, and indeed it is now, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear him will live. Friends, we have assembled here this morning to celebrate the life of our beloved Mrs. Ang Eunice Angelina Osehudie, and to commend her soul to God. Even though we have assembled in grief, we still give thanks to God because in his time, Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again and lives forevermore, we have an assurance of life that never ends. Jesus assures us, because I live, you, my disciples, will also live. Amen. In that vein, we continue with the service as we sing from the Methodist hymn 25. Round the Lord in glory seated, cherubim and seraphim.
please sit and let us pray. O oh God, the Lord of life, the conqueror of death, our help in every time of trouble, who does not willingly grieve or afflict the children of men, comfort us who mourn, and give us grace in the presence of death to worship you, that we may have sure hope of eternal life, and be enabled to put our whole trust in you and your goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, Father, deal graciously, we pray you, with those who mourn, that casting their every care on you, they may know the consolation of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, who have loved us with an everlasting love, help us now to wait upon you with reverence and submissive hearts, that we may, through patience and comfort of the Holy Scriptures, may have hope and be lifted above our distress into the light and peace of your presence. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will continue singing MHB 386, after which we will take the biography. So the person to read it should get himself ready. 386 of the Methodist Hymn Book.
will now take the biography of the deceased, after which will follow the tributes of the children, the grandchildren, and the sisters. Biography. Biography and tribute by family. <coughs> Angelina Erefua Jatua Osaihir was born in Sekendi on 23rd September 1932 to the late Dr. Ebenezer Amos Saki, OBE, and Mrs. Yakoba Amanua Saki. Her father was an eminent electrical engineer from Winneba, the first Ghanaian chief electrical engineer, electricity department. Her mother from Elmina was an outstanding, multi-talented entrepreneur who was a fashion and jewelry designer, a radio presenter, and an author of plays in Fanti for the Fanti radio service. Erefwa, as she was affectionately called, was the first of Dr. and Mrs. Saki's six children. Her siblings are the late Ebenezer Saki, the late Mrs. Anna Inkumsa, Mrs. Hetty Emisa, Mrs. Felicia Besimete, and Ms. Yakova Saki. Erefwa started her education at six years at the Second D Methodist Primary School in 1938. Even at this age, she was the youngest in her class and a polite, petite little girl. At one time, she was the only child in the entire school who wore sandals. Eunice, in her typical self, so that she would not feel privileged over her mates, would always take off her shoes and walk barefooted, much to the displeasure of her parents. In 1948, around the same time she completed her middle school education, she moved to Accra with her family. While in Accra, Eunice gained admission to Achimota College in the same year. She was a boarder at Kingsley House. At Achimota, Eunice was known to be very quiet, but fun-loving and disciplined. She excelled in fine art and craft. Some of her mates at the time included the late Mrs. Sally Mugabe, former First Lady of the Republic of Zimbabwe the late Mrs. Sylvia Dihir, née Ribeiro, and Miss Eunice Coleman, her best friend from Standard One in primary school through to Achibota. Mrs. Helen Loco, a former managing director of Ghana Commercial Bank and a member of the Accra Church Choir, 
has very fond memories of Eunice, having been in the same dormitory. Eunice completed her education at Achimota in 1951. In 1955, Dr. and Mrs. Saki traveled to the United Kingdom with their six children, and while there, Eunice was enrolled at the Kingston School of Art in Surbiton to pursue architecture. In the UK, Eunice was involved in many activities, including representing the Gold Coast at various Commonwealth ce celebrations held in London. For example, Eunice and five other ladies from the Gold Coast were invited to represent the colony as overseas debutantes to present themselves to the Queen of England at a party held at Buckingham Palace. A debutante in those days was a young woman of aristocratic or upper class family background who had reached adulthood and was presented to society at a formal debutante ball. Eunice was also focused on her career and worked with various architectural firms in London to gain experience. Some of the firms she worked with include Ronald Ward and Partners, who were in Belgrave Square, Manning, Clamp and Partners in Richmond Park, and Elliot, Cox and Partners in Victoria. Eunice, just like her mother, was a beautiful woman. She was humble, courteous, and caring. She was a lady and paid attention to how she presented herself. She was always impeccably dressed and noted for her Western and traditional African fashion sense. As if to endorse her love for fashion, in her later years in the UK, she had a personal fashion designer in the person of her late sister, Anna, a London-trained fashion designer, making even more beautiful and outstanding outfits for her. Eunice had a model figure and was often approached by professional photographers to get her to model for them. But Eunice, being private and camera shy, would always decline. Her worst experience was when she went into a photography studio in Knightsbridge, London, for a personal photo shoot. The photographer was so stunned by her beauty and how she carried herself that he posted a large copy of the photo and showcased it in his shop window. You can imagine how shocked she was when she saw her photograph displayed in public. It was not a surprise that this beauty caught the attention of Patrick Osaifir, a royal from Asante Bekwai, who had earned his BA honors degree in legal sciences at Trinity College, Dublin, and was, subs was subsequently called to the English bar, the Middle Temple, Inns of Court. He met Eunice when he visited his sister Patricia, who was sharing a flat with Eunice. Their friendship developed into a relationship, and upon, completing, and upon completing their education, they both decided to return to Ghana to build a career and get married. In December 1961, Patrick and Eunice got married at the Accra Ridge Church. As the eldest daughter of Dr. and Mrs. Saki, and the first among her siblings to get married, it was not a surprise that her wedding was a talk of the town at the time. Eunice went all out to make this a grand occasion. Her sister Hetty organized her wedding cake from the Domestic Trades College and Winning Hospitality Training Department in Manchester. Domestic Trades College later became part of Manchester Polytechnic, then Manchester Metropolitan University. Hetty was a student at the college at the time. Her younger sisters, Felicia and Jacoba, were her bridesmaids, and her wedding dress was ordered from London. Patrick's best man was his cousin, Mr. O.T. Ajiman, a, a rising architect at the time. The wedding was attended by many prominent people in the newly independent Ghana. 
Eunice joined the Ghana National Construction Corporation before eventually joining the Public Works Department, PWD, as an architect. She held this position till she took early retirement in 1983. Her husband, after running his law practice for a few years, joined the judicial service as a magistrate grade one in March 1962. He had a successful career which saw him rise through the ranks to the highest office as a Supreme Court judge of the Republic of Ghana before he retired in 1993. Eunice was a woman of faith. She was involved in various activities at her local Methodist church. She authored a daily prayer book, Dada Mpabo, meaning daily prayer, written in the Fanti language to help people who could not read English. This was no surprise, as her family always had a firm root in the church. Her grandfather, Reverend Ebenezer Saki, was a well-known Methodist priest whose faith and pioneering ability saw him raise funds to build and refurbish several chapels for the Methodist Church across Ghana. Notable of them was the refurbishment of the Cape Coast Wesley Methodist Church. Her own parents had also been very committed to serving God and had been very influential in the church growth at the Accra Ray Church until they passed away. Eunice and Patrick's six children, Patricia, Jacoba, Rosemary, Patrick, Albert, and Philip, are also following the footsteps of their great-grandfather, grandparents, and mother in supporting the work of God as their way of growing their faith. Eunice had a successful career which spanned over 20 years. The challenges of being a mother of six children and married to a judge who was transferred several times across the country did not deter her from practicing as an architect. At every town her husband was transferred to, Eunice would join the architectural team at the local PWD office to undertake several building projects. Aside from her professional career, she was passionate about empowering women to be self-sufficient through learning a skill. She offered to mentor many women across Ghana. She was also a member of the National Council for Women and Development. Eunice and Patrick were blessed with a loving marriage of 37 years until Patrick was called to his maker in, on 19th December, 1998. The passing of her soulmate had a significant impact on her. She stayed out of the limelight and spent most of her days at home with her children and close family. Over the years, when hit by health challenges, with the help of her loving family and carers, she would always pull through and get back on her feet. She became weaker as she approached her 90th birthday, but her memory was remarkably intact and alert. Her children organized a grand birthday party on her 90th birthday in September 2022. This party reunited her with her close family and friends, some of whom she had not seen for over 20 years. On Friday, 2nd December, Eunice, in her typical character, was joking with her nurse and discussing the Ghana Black Stars World Cup match. Finally, she lay down for her usual afternoon nap and slipped away peacefully to join her maker. Ifwa Jatua, we love you, we miss you, but your maker loves you more. Thank you for your love, compassion for others, and boundless capacity to give. Rest in the arms of our Lord, and Savior, Jesus Christ.
Ave Maria, piena, piena eres de gracia, bendito eres tu entre todas las mujeres. Y bendito es el fruto de tu ventre, Jesús. Ave, Ave María. Entre todas las mujeres, y bendito es el fruto de tu ventre, Jesús. Santa, Santa María, Santa María. Nosotros pecadores, ahora y en la hora de nuestra muerte. Bendito eres tú entre todas las mujeres. Bendito es el fruto de tu ventre, Jesús. Santa, Santa María, Santa. Nosotros pecadores, ahora en la hora de nuestra muerte. Memories of our mother. This tribute is from Patricia Nayo, my older sister. She shall be praised, a wife of noble character who can find. She is worth far more than rubies. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. 
Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor for all, honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Dear mom, you are an example of a perfect mother. You are kind, loving, strong, and disciplined. Mommy was an exceptional woman, very graceful, very creative, and very innovative. Being the firstborn, I was privileged to get first-hand training and guidance from this beautiful old Achimotan architect who was married to the late Justice Patrick Victor Osiri a former justice of the Supreme Court. Mommy had an excellent organizational skill. She played her role very well as a mother, an architect with PWD, and a wife of a judge who had us all moving from region to region every four to six years. In 1966 in Accra, I remember when we were just three girls, Mommy would sometimes take us to, to work park her car next to her office window, and she, and, she, and she kept us busy with lots of colored pencils and coloring books. We loved it a lot. In 1971 at Ho, the arrival of our three brothers in Ho was very special. We were excited to have brothers. Mom trained us and trusted her three girls to look after their baby brothers while at work. This, I must say, was the begin beginning of a strong bond among us siblings. In 1974 in Sunyane, Mommy became more involved with the church activities and women's charity organization. She became the chief architect in PWD. I remember I had the opportunity to join Mommy a few times when she had to travel to a couple of her building projects in the Brongahapu region. Mommy became more involved with church activities and women's charity organizations. She became the chief architect in PWD. I remember I had the opportunity to join Mommy a few times when she had to travel to a couple of building projects in the Brongahapu region. An example was in Brekum, a 45 minute drive from Sonyane. I really admired the way my mother, the way my mother, the only woman at the site, led the inspection with such proficiency and mastery. She was respected by the workmen and her colleagues. I could go on and on with many years of wonderful memories from Third Ridge Cape Coast through cantonments in Accra, then finally to Adabraka. Our home was always a joy to be in when cousins and friends visited. Mommy was very innovative and very creative. She taught, she taught us how to be creative even with little resources. In your days in Adabraka, especially 23 years after our dad passed, you have shown us how strong-willed, resilient, and courageous you are. Mommy, you were the true picture of motherhood. You raised all your children and grandchildren in the way of the Lord. You taught, you, you taught us character, love, hard work, and respect for all. We have been able to achieve much today because of your selfless service. Thank you so much. Finally, I quote from Maya Angelou's phenomenal woman. Now you understand just why my head's not bowed. I don't shout or jump about or have to talk real loud. When you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. I say it's in the click of my heels, the bend of my hair, the palm of my hand, the need for my care, cause I'm a woman phenomenally, phenomenally, phenomenal woman, that's you, mommy. Fare thee well, rest in the bosom of God till we meet again. Tribute from Yakoba. 
Mommy, I have so many fond memories of you. You were one amazing person, a mother who had rare qualities that were unsurpassable, an industrious mother who tried her hands at almost everything, not minding whether she would fail on her first attempt or not. Even if she did, she will try again and again till she got it right. In all this, you had your full-time job as an architect, which also sometimes demanded a lot of your time, but you were able to juggle between work, taking care of your family, and your side interests. The first time I recall as a child, seeing her do, her, seeing her do or try her hands was baking bread for us to have for breakfast. We loved her morning freshly baked hot rolls which my sisters and I later learned how to bake when we were a bit older. I saw her still, at a young age, try other things as well. She ventured into tie and dye. Mommy had a very lovely, unique design. She had this business going on for years. She made tablecloths and napkins, wrap skirts and culottes for both men and women. She made neckties, and full 12 yards of cloth they could use. I had a keen interest, especially in her simple but intricate designs and way of tying. She shared with me one of her secret ways of tying and dyeing the fabrics that gave her those beautiful, unique designs when I was a bit older. Mommy's industrious nature didn't stop there. We saw her make her own kinky, gary, cakes, biscuits, cookies, sardines, baked beans, rearing of animals, ch charcoal, sewing, hairdressing, etc., etc. The list goes on and on and on. I really, really admired her passion for trying her hands at doing things. She was a jack of all trades and a master of all. You taught, you taught me a lot, mommy, and I learned a lot from you. I'm so grateful for the years we shared and for being there for us all. We know you are no more with us, but your memory will live forever, will, will forever be with us. Rest peacefully in the loving arms of God. We'll miss you. Pre tribute from myself. Lord of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy, whose trust ever childlike, no cares can destroy. Be there at our waking and give us, we pray, your bliss in our hearts, Lord, at the break of day. Lord of all ki kindliness, Lord of all grace, your hands swift to welcome, your arms to embrace. Be there at our, at our homing and give us, we pray, your love in our hearts, Lord, at the eve of the day. Lord of all gentleness, Lord of all calm, whose voice is contentment, whose presence is balm. Be there at our sleeping and give us, we pray, your peace in our hearts, Lord, at the end of the day. The Bible says there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Today I choose to dance to celebrate a life well lived. Dear Mommy, thank you for living such an exemplary life. You had a great impact on us. You taught us how to love, help, and sacrifice. The family was very important to you, and you showed tremendous dedication to your family and beyond by the way you live. I remember every time we communicated, the, fir the first question you would ask, ask was, Andre no mami no hotsuden. You would ask even before you ask how I am doing. I am grateful to God for giving me the opportunity to spend quality time with you one final time in November 2022, even though it was under such tragic circumstances. If I knew it would be our last time hugging each other, I would have hugged you even longer. As I said goodbye to, as I said goodbye to you, you did not shed a tear. It felt strange because it was the very first time we said goodbye without you asking, 
will I see you again? I did not have to convince you that I would definitely see you again. God had his own plan. He knew it was time to call you home. I will forever cherish all that you did for us. Mommy, rest well in your maker's arms. Daye till we meet again. Good morning, and I'll be reading the memories for the sons. And before I do that, I want to express our special appreciation to the choir, especially for the song, the last song they performed. That was one of Mommy's favorites. So thank you so much for being so considerate and generous in your love. I'll start reading the tributes from, since I'm the first boy, I'll start reading from the youngest son, from Philip, so, and end with my tribute. So this is from Philip Savory. What an amazing life I celebrate today. I'm so blessed to have had such a remarkable and inspiring woman as my mother. You showed me the true meaning of selflessness leading from within without wanting recognition or attention. Throughout your 90 years, you went above and beyond as a trailblazer who championed women's rights by breaking into architecture in the early 60s when few women dared to do so. Supporting church initiatives that encourage women empowerment, providing valuable skills, training opportunities to less fortunate people, the list goes on. So it is no wonder I find myself advocating for equal opportunities even now all thanks to you who touched everything, everyone around you with grace, kindness, strength, and courage. Mommy, as we affectionately called you, you are an amazing role model for us growing up. You nurtured us with love, but didn't let that soften your disciplinarian nature. You always encouraged diligence and excellence in our work to get the most out of ourselves. But more than anything else, you instilled in us the importance of integrity in all we do. Mommy, our bond grew closer as I became older and you became more than just a mom. Whenever I visited Ghana, would spend hours discussing the family history and exploring parts of Accra, especially places like the State House that you worked with the architectural team that designed and built in the 60s. Of course, at every catch up, there were always plenty of jokes flying around between us. On the one hand, I couldn't help but tease you with some silliness, as he's always doing. <laughs> On the other end, we had those witty one-liners from you that will leave everyone in uncontrollable fits of laughter. Mommy, you were a fighter, pushing through your most challenging times with courage and faith in God. Every evening before you went to bed, we would hear prayers of thanksgiving for each one of us accompanied by singing hymns from your favorite Methodist hymn book from your bedroom. Typical of you, on the 2nd of December 2022, you left us peacefully without a fuss during your, after, your usual afternoon siesta. Mommy, your legacy lives on within, within all the lasting memories we share, showing us to stay united in love and never lose faith in our God. Thank you again for all you did for us. Now that you have fought a good fight and won your race, it's time to rest with your maker. Rest in peace, mommy. And this is from Albert. Luke 23, 43. And he said to him, truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Mother, you heard God's whisper calling you home. You gave your hand to God and slipped away quietly without telling us bye. That was on Friday, 2nd December, 2022, at 5.30 p.m. Yes, death is inevitable, but the loss of a mother can be unfathomable, unfathomably painful. Yet, even at a very old, old age, we all desire to continue to see our our mother or our loving mother strong and living. Mom, my love for building construction work came from you. I remember when I was young, I always saw you drawing. Your hand-drawn architectural building plans motivated and inspired me. 
I use these same drawings and your building design books in my building construction course at school. You even became my second, my second lecturer at home. I noticed when I started working in construction at the school how male-dominated the sector is and how difficult it is to work with construction workers. It made me wonder how mom coped with being a female architect, and for that matter, one of the first in Ghana in her era. It showed me that mom was a fearless woman. Mom, any time I look at the paintings you produced still hanging on the walls at Adabraka, it brings memories of you and your love for art. Mommy was a strong woman and a disciplinarian. No wonder my, friend called, uh, my friends called her Adabraka Margaret Thatcher, <laughs> a true copy of the former British Prime Minister who was bold and very strong. Mommy, you always worried about how much time I spent to make sure you were always comfortable. But I wouldn't have loved anything more than being able to look after you in your old age. So I'm grateful to God for having had the opportunity to spend time with you till your end. You are the best mom in the world, and I miss you dearly. I know you are in a better place now. I promise to make you proud by keeping your legacy. Goodbye, mom. Rest well with the Lord. Albert Anker Oti. And the last um, tribute is from Patrick Sebi. That's me. <laughs> Four score and ten years, your light did shine. Through all the changing scenes of life, in health and sickness, prosperity and distress, one score and more a widow, your quiet flame was steadfast, bright, illuminating, and inspiring. Your light do us in fellowship and unity, shined against the darkness, and guided us to the light of the world. The lives you touched brighter will shine on in your memory and for his glory. Mommy, you are an unassuming well of talent, character, and inspiration, and many wish they could, they could be just one of the things you were or did so well, your ingenious resourcefulness. By the blessing of the Lord and your resourcefulness, your jar of meal did not run out when store shelves were empty during the revolution and the farming in the 1980s. Raising chickens, ducks, goats, sheep in your backyard to growing maize, sending us to the miller to make our own condo, Tom Brown and peanut butter, only because our tabletop mill was missing an irreplaceable part, would have made the condo at home ourselves making gary, baking bread and pastries, there was nothing you wouldn't try and succeed to keep your family fit and healthy. You would sew and modify or alter clothes for us. I remember desiring and asking for you for a bathrobe to take to secondary school, and that was in Form 1, and you sewed me a one-of-a-kind bathrobe of many colors that I wore fabulously for many years. And if there are any mobile guys here who are in Barbara, they would attest to that. Your fierce protection. You are always concerned about the well-being of your family. You played the tough wife, shielding your husband from disgruntled plaintiffs and defendants and stood with him in preserving his integrity. By turning away from our door, clients unwittingly or blatantly seeking to influence his legal decisions. Like a mother eagle, you protected us from spiritual and physical harm down to the insanitary food preparation and packaging practices of street vendors that I learned the hard way at an early age not to buy, or should I say, not to let you know I was eating. <laughs> because any time you found me eating, out the window went the food. <laughs> you always found trusted eyes to look out for us and keep you informed when we're away at boarding school. It became our routine in my early years at Infanspim that on your way home from work, you will look out for a tickling gilly, because at that time my head was very big. At the Infantry Senior Field, honk and see me way to know I was okay. 
he still kept looking out for me when I traveled abroad. And where your hand and eyes could not reach, your prayers continued to support me. Your deep faith. You honored the ministry and memory of your grandfather, Reverend E. A. Saki, and you believe the promise that blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Psalm 112, verses 1 and 2. You encouraged me to delight in the word of God at a very early age as you listened to me read from the Bible every night, even after a long and hard day's work. By your example and support, you nurtured a strong commitment to spreading the gospel and ministering the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. You were keenly interested and invested in my involvement with Joyful Ways Ministry, and I'm forever grateful for your permission, prayers, presence, and giving. I also acknowledge the tremendous spiritual impact from accompanying you to Full Gospel Businessmen, Men's Fellowship International, breakfast meetings in those early days. I will cherish your wisdom and godly counsel from our conversations about life, family, work, and purpose, as well as guidance to walk with God so his fire neither consumes us nor gets extinguished in us. And as we're sitting here singing your favorite hymn, Methodist hymn 386, I realized that from the third verse, that was where that wisdom came from. You desire that you, you and your household will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved, and to the glory of God, it is so. Your last years. After one of our phone conversations where you asked again when I would come to Ghana, I had this deep sense that you were waiting to say goodbye. And like a beloved son, I thought, let me delay my visit to Ghana so we could be continue, we would continue to be blessed with having her with us. The pandemic happened and interrupted travel, but God had his plans and couldn't keep me away for long. We, and he worked it out that we agreed and planned to honor her with a 90th birthday celebration in September. There was no way I wasn't going to be in Ghana for that, and I stayed in Adabraka, spending most of my time with her. When it was time for me to leave for the airport, I did not want to say goodbye because I didn't want you to say goodbye. I kept saying, I will be back. I will be back. I can only imagine that about 10 weeks later, in her sleep, she saw the light of God's glory and asked the Lord about her family in her quiet and caring voice. And he answered, yes, I am the Lord their keeper, and I shall preserve them from all evil. Then in quietness and trust, she entered into his rest. I share the words of these songs as a reflection of a testimony, and I wouldn't read through that because of time. But what the first song is, is her testimony of the faithfulness of God, and the last one ends with a line from one of her favorite hymns as well. It is well, it is well with our souls. It is well, it is well with our souls. Mommy, rest in your maker and savior. Thank you. I can see you want to stretch. Shall we stand and sing the first stanza of 608, Captain of Israel's host, as we receive the tribute of the grandchildren.
children will not be their children. Kosia and I will read the grandchildren's tribute. I'll start with myself. Uh, Grandma, I still remember our beach holiday many years ago. I was sitting next to you watching the sun rise. We talked and bonded about how beautiful it was and how we could paint this scenario. That moment has stuck with me the most. You taught, me how, you taught me to have faith in my gifts and trust the Lord will always guide me. I am heartbroken that you left us. You were strong, full of love and support for all the grandchildren and our families who would always make time to contact you no matter how far they were. You cared for our well-being and health every time we visited you in person. It is hard to believe this has changed since KK and I have visited you ever since we were born. I'm grateful that we celebrated your 90th birthday this year to let you know how much we appreciate you, your legacy, your achievements, and most of all, the importance of being together as a family to continue to live on. Rest in perfect peace, Grandma. We'll miss you so much. Next is Kapwi. Grandma was very kind and loving. She enjoyed being with her grandchildren. I remember in 2004, we traveled to London with grandma. She had a very nice time with her family. We stayed in Uncle Philip's house and she told us lots of stories of when she was a student in London. Then in 2007, we traveled again with grandma to America. We stayed with Auntie Rosie and her family in Frederick, Maryland. Auntie Margaret and her family also came down from Chicago to visit. I remember when we all went to the water park and we had a very nice time. We'll miss those lovely times with you. Grandma, I won't forget the good times we shared together. You taught me how to make necklaces with beads and you taught me how to draw. I remember the times I used to help you cook in the kitchen. I'll miss you very much. And here's a poem here. A grandma's blessing. She's thoughtfulness and love, the finest and most precious gift sent from our father above. You know she'll always be there, whether the skies be blue or gray, She'll always lend a helping hand, so never turn away. Each selfless thing about her is special and stressful to recall. A grandma's blessing, the most precious one of all. Rest in peace, grandma. Love, Kathleen. I will jump to Andre Amato. During our last trip in Ghana in 2018, when we visited you and I hugged you, you gave me a sense of warmth and comfort. You were always so kind and loving to everyone, ar everyone around you. You, were, you always had a certain glow of innocence and happiness. Seeing you taught me to always value life you have and to live it to its fullness. I also loved chatting with you whenever we had our WhatsApp video calls. Even though you are gone, I'll still honor to have you to have grown, gotten to know you better in recent years and the memories I've had of you will forever remain in my heart. And Jaden Osehre. Grandma, as the youngest grandson, I wish I could have spent more time with you and got to know you better, to learn from you about all the things I aspire to be. You watched my first piano recital video and you were so proud of me. You told me to keep playing the piano and not to quit learning music. Even though I was far away, you supported me in everything that I did. I know you are in heaven watching for me and I'll keep you in my heart always. Memories of Grandma from Aretha. Dear Grandma, I'm grateful to God that you lived a long, fulfilling life. Thank you so much for all your love. You taught me how to crochet, and you were the one who showed me for the first time how to tie my shoelaces the correct way. You were extremely happy and proud of me when you heard I wanted to pursue a career in construction. You were kind and generous. There was not a day we visited that we would leave with nothing. 
you made sure we had something to take home with us, including pocket money. I always remember mommy sometimes would try to stop you from giving us too much money and you insisting and saying, more money will come. Heaven has gained another angel, and so have I. Rest in perfect peace, Grandma. I will miss you. From Jillian. Grandma was one of the most generous, loving, and kind-hearted people I have ever met. Whenever we visited, which I looked forward to, she made sure we were comfortable throughout our stay and would give us some treats and money when we were leaving. She'd do the same every year on our birthdays and on other special occasions, and I was very grateful for that. She also taught me to crochet and make beaded jewelry when we were younger, which took away the boredom during the long holidays. Every memory of grandma is a good and happy one and will be cherished forever. Till we meet again, rest in perfect peace, Ifwa. From Kevin, grandma, though we were so far apart, I will always cherish the time we spent with you during our stay in Ghana. You always put the needs of others before yourself. I remember the last time we saw you. You were concerned about our well-being and wanted to make sure we were well taken care of during our visit. Thank you for your sacrifices, your care and concern, your love, and everything you did for us. You may have passed on, but your memories will forever live on within us. I know you are in a much better place. I will forever be grateful and thankful that you are my grandmother. From Ian. Grandma, though I am saddened by your passing, I am incredibly honored to be given the chance to write your tribute. While there was a vast distance between us, when we did have the chance to interact, I saw you were an exceptional kind-hearted woman who always put their loved ones before themselves, a true pillar of our family. Now you are in a better place beside our Lord in heaven, and we shall continue living our lives in ways, in ways that you would be proud of, through spreading love and affection, not only for members of our family, but for everyone around us in our daily lives. May you rest in peace in God's arms. We, continue, we promise to continue your legacy. We love you, Grandma. Thank you. And lastly, we take the tribute of the sisters. I don't know why the brothers will not come.
indeed we will celebrate and jubilate. Memories of our sister, Mrs. Eunice Angelina Kasehe, from Hetty, Felicia, and Jacoba. Memories of our sister Eunice, or Sister Rifwa, as we all called her, will vary due to the very wide gap in our ages. Our parents managed an even distribution with their children, and so we more or less moved in twos. Eunice and our only brother, Ebenezer, then came Anna and Hetty, and last of all, Felicia and Jacoba. And so for us, that is Felicia and Jacoba, when we let out our first prize on earth, she had nearly completed secondary school. The gap with Hetty was not so wide, so she was more familiar with what was going on in the very early years. And so Hetty remembers that when she was six and the family was living in second year at that time, Sister Irifwa had the responsibility of taking her and our late sister Anna to school. And they would run through the railway station and railway lines since that was a shorter route and just opposite our home. They found that very exciting and would laugh all the way. It is fortunate for them that our father never got to hear of it at that time, as they would have had nothing to laugh about. She also remembers how the others would make fun of her at times, as being the youngest, she was made the go-between with our parents. When the result was good, she would be praised, but when she was given a big no, the other three, led by Sister Rufwa, would tease her by covering one eye. Hetty also remembers Sister Rufwa as a chorister in the Second D Methodist Church in those days. She has memories of how Sister Eunice would make them all laugh with the many stories and jokes she would share with them when she came home on holidays from Achimota College. Our memories all come together in 1955, the time all six of us children went to England on holiday with our parents. We had a great time together in London with lots to do and much fun. However, when it was time to return to Accra, we were told our big sister and only brother would be staying on to study. That was very sad. So for two years, we never saw either of them. In 1957, our parents took us back to England on holiday, and we were told we'd be seeing our big sister Eunice and brother again. Of course, we were more than excited. You can imagine the look on all our faces when we finally saw our sister Rivwa. We just stood there looking at her. She was calling us, Irana, Irajwa, Mampeyin, Irama, and speaking Fanti too. But this lady was looking like someone from a magazine. Elegant, beautiful, her dress, shoes, hair. We just gazed at her. We had a great holiday with her around. We would visit her in her flat, and she would take us out for bus rides, walks through the park, and would buy ice cream and ice lollies for us. After our holiday, we came back to Accra, again without her and our brother, as they continued with their courses. Some years later, we were told a lawyer, Mr. Patrick Victor Osaihir, wanted to marry Sister Rufwa, and he came to greet the family at our home at the Ridge Roundabout. For us, that is, Felicia and Jacoba, he was ideal because he brought us some bars of Cadbury chocolate. but he was a wonderful person, and we still miss him. After some time, Sister Eunice returned to Ghana, and we got to know there was going to be a wedding, and that the two of us, the two of us, Felicia and Jacoba, were going to be her bridesmaids. We were more than excited and chatted about all the arrangements continuously 
annoying her at times with our excitement. The great day arrived, and our sister looked beautiful. The wedding was held in the old Ray Church building where the church hall complex now stands, and the reception at the home of Sir Charles and Lady Techie Manson, the parents of Reverend Stella Bensi Angel, was not far from the church. Hetty recalls that she, she had, had arranged for her wedding cake to be made at her college in Manchester, where she was undergoing a course in catering, bakery, and confectionery. So Sister Rufa brought her own cake down to Ghana on her return. Our sister must have decided to follow the footsteps of our parents because she also came up with six children, but with an equal balance of three girls and then three boys. Obviously believing in women's empowerment that far back as the girls, that far back as the girls came first, even with six lively children, she managed to go to work and we remember her driving around in her Cortina with a full car. Sister Riff was able to accompany her husband who had joined the judicial service on transfer to Hohoi, Ho, Sunyani, and Cape Coast. Our best memories of Sunyani would be of the cartons of juicy and delicious mangoes and guavas she sent down to us in Accra every now and then. Sister Eunice also tried her hand at tie and dye making when that art came out and became very popular in Ghana many years ago. And she made the most beautiful and unique designs. She also enjoyed baking, especially her fruit cake, special fruit cake, which was a must for her at Christmas. The cake was indeed full of fruits and every delicious and very delicious and took quite some time to bake but she was always very patient with it. Sister Eunice had a strong belief in God and the Christian faith and served as a leader in the Methodist church. Hetty recalls the numerous discussions they used to have on the Bible. It was a difficult time for her when Patrick fell ill for some time and was called home also in the month of December. She did her very best to remain strong. After some years, she encountered some health challenges, but even then, she tried to keep cheerful. She would come up with a joke when you least expected it, making everyone laugh. At a Christmas gathering in December 2020, those sitting near her were wondering who or what she was asking for. Sorry, I'll read that again. Those sitting near her remember her calling out in her soft voice, anchor, anchor, anchor. We were wondering who or what she was asking for, but we suspected it was our version of uncle. Finally, her helper who had brought her lunch to her said laughingly, oh, she's actually calling her son Atto. Since we call him Ankara, she also decided to do the same. We all burst out laughing, and Sister Eunice had a very amused look on her face, as if to say, I got you all wondering. We are very grateful to the children and their families for all the love and support showered on our dear sister to have enabled her to hold on for all this time. We prayed she would celebrate her 90th birthday in September last year, and God heard and answered our prayers, and the children gave her such a wonderful celebration. She even asked why they wanted to take her home towards the end of the function, when the party had not really ended. Our dear Auntie Sarah Namli Ribeiro sat close to her and chatted with her for quite some time which made her very happy. Dear Sister Eunice, Sister Rifwa, sleep on peacefully in the arms of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We love you, but God loves you best. Amen. Before we take the scripture readings, the choir will 
render a song. We invite the readers to come up front. Bible reading is taken from the book of Revelations, chapter 7, from verse 9 to 17. Let's hear the word of God. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, 
standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing round the throne, and round the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they? And where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made, their white, made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of God. Good morning. The second scripture reading is taken from John chapter 14 from verse 1 to 6 and verse 27. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Verse 5. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. This is the word of the Lord. The Reverend Joseph Bryan and Sir will preach the sermon. Let us prepare our hearts to receive the sermon as we sing from the Methodist team number 34. We shall sing the first, the third, and the last stanzas only. One, three, and five. Immortal, invisible, God only wise.
Our Heavenly Father, we want to give you thanks and praise for a time like this to celebrate the life of your handmaid, Mrs. Eunice Angelina Osei You gave her to us and at the ripe age of 90, having served her generation according to your will, you've called her to be with you. We say, blessed be your name. We are praying, oh God, that even as your word comes, you will comfort us. At the same time, you lead us by your spirit in the paths of righteousness that we will also to the line that she trod, leaving a legacy worth emulating. Be with us, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As I sat, first of all, let me thank Bishop for the opportunity for me to bring the word today and also the family. Um, those of you who know me, you will know that I'm from here. <laughs> I became an Osofo from the Rechurch. But because I'm an Osofo, I have to minister to other people every Sunday, so you don't see me much. But whenever there is an opportunity, I come home. So I'm home. And at the same time, I like the sea of white that I see. The Revelation scripture that we read, those who wash, who wash their robes in the blood of the Lamb, they wear white robes. So may we aspire to be like them. May we fix our eyes on Jesus. Keep our eyes on the goal that having been through this life, we will also attain eternal life, which comes through no one else but Jesus, the Christ. Glowing tributes have been paid about our mother. A matriarch, I can say, a woman par excellence, a disciplinarian. I can't continue. I've jotted down a lot of the attributes that generations have paid to Auntie Eunice, Auntie Rufa. And I believe she is an example of the Christians that we all aspire to be. At a time like this, we don't talk about the one who has departed. He's going to be with the Lord. She's paid her dues. She's fought the good fight. Finished her race. Kept the faith. And we believe God will have her crown waiting for her. She will have one of the mansions prepared for her as well. What about us? Let us also ensure that as we pass through this world, just as once, we won't miss eternity. Jesus has told us in the John scripture, John 14, 6, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. That no one comes to God except through him. So if we give our lives to Christ and live for him, in death there will be victory for us. The heavenly kingdom that we aspire to enter is not made for the kind of bodies that we possess now. 1 Corinthians 15, 50 will tell you, flesh and blood 
cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So, as of necessity, definitely all of us will pass through this portal of death. But when we get to the other side, the life that we've left, led will determine one of two possibilities, whether we'll be in heaven or whether we'll be in hell. And then our Lord Jesus Christ, our example, our savior, our redeemer, he passed this way before and opened the life gate for us. He said, not that he gives resurrection or he resurrects people. He said, what? I am the resurrection and the life. So it behooves on each and every one of us to ensure, to make sure that we know this Jesus, that we have a personal relationship with him, that come here or whatever happens to us will be found in him so that whether we live or die will become his then we will not mourn too much, even as the passing of a loved one like Auntie Rufa. Because we know she's just gone ahead of us. And she's among the cloud of witnesses that Revelations 9 talks about. Those who are waving palm in their hands, praising God. They've made it. They've washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. And may we all also come to that place where we will also wash our robes in the blood of the Lamb. When Jesus died and resurrected, he was giving a new body, a body that can pass through walls, can disappear and appear. But that body eats. So it's a different dimension of body. And that is what all who believe in him, who have yielded unto him as their Lord and Savior and Master as part to, that when he appears, we will be like him. And we shall be raised and given a glorified body like he has. Our bodies will then not be subjected to death or decay. There is this song that uh, the choir sing. Uh, hallelujah. Jesus Christ. So I don't know whether you can sing it for Hallelujah, where do you so just sing a refrain for, for me so that we know that Christ has won victory for us. He has opened the life gate unto us. And if we follow by faith, believing in him. The grace of God that brings salvation is through faith in Jesus Christ. And it has appeared to all men. No one is without excuse. Let us all endeavor, make sure, no matter what happens, no matter the situations and circumstances that we find ourselves, we know that all may change. Who never changed? Jesus never changed. Is the same. Yes, sir. Are you praying? Well, okay.
Christians have victory over death. Say amen. amen. Beco Why? Why can we say that? Because of the victory of Jesus Christ in his own resurrection. Jesus said in John 14, 19, because I live, you will also live. Because I live. In him, there is, uh, in him was life. And that life was the light of men. And he's saying, because he lives. If you are found in him, you will also do what? You will also live. So let us fix our eyes on Jesus. Hebrews 12, 2. The author and perfecter of our faith. For the goal set before him, there's a goal. God does not want, I wish to meet all of you in heaven, clad in white. Because that is the wish of God, that no one should perish. But that all will come to the saving grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That we would take death as just a portal, a doorway through all through which all must pass. In Genesis 3.19, when Adam and Eve sinned and they were punished, God said, what? Dust thou art, and unto dust you shall return. But the interesting thing is that we are what? We have a body, soul, and spirit. So when dust returns, Two components are left, isn't it? Your soul. That has all the imprints of the life that you led and the spirit that God gave you. They will return to render account. Will you make it? Will God say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Will you be counted among those who have washed their robes in the blood of Jesus. Indeed, sin, death, and the law go together. The law reveals sin. And the wages of sin is what? Death. That's what Romans chapter 6, 23 tells us. But be of good cheer. Jesus Christ bore our sin. On the cross, First Peter 2, 24. And also bore the curse of the law for us in Galatians 3, 13. It is through him that we have this victory. And we share this victory today. And we believe that our sister, Sister Refua, has overcome. And that she's gone to be with the Lord. That she's just falling asleep. Therefore, we do not have to mourn too much. It's true, we will maintain the fan, fond memories. As I listen to the tribute, she's left a legacy for her generation, her children, and her children's children, which they have professed that they will hold on to, and which I believe they will pass on to their children's children. And that's what God has called us to be. That when we come on earth, when we come through the revealed things of God, that means the world, what we see, to know that there is a God and to come to know him, then we will pass on this God that we believe in to our children and ensure that our children will pass it on to their children and on to their children's children. So that all generations will know God. That no one will perish. The literal translation of the scripture, 1 Corinthians 15, 20, um, 15 58, says what? It, which is Paul's hymn of praise to the Lord in answer to 
Ecclesiastes, you see, in Ecclesiastes, the preacher man, what does he say? Vanity, vanity of vanity. All is vanity. When, when Solomon, the preacher, studied life, he found it as vanity. We all of us can testify what we are struggling for, we are working for, we are doing all kinds of things for. When we die, we leave all behind. Others will come and fight over it. If we are not careful, if we haven't laid a good, uh, made provisions, people who didn't love you will come and fight <laughs> and amass your wealth. You cannot take anything because that is not the medium of the next world. It's a spiritual world. It, uh, it needs new bodies. And you can only enter by washing, being, by being washed by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. We experience the power of his resurrection in our lives as we yield to him. Paul said it in Philippians 3, and I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering or the fellowship of sharing in his suffering, becoming like him in his death. So when we look at life, and we can agree with Solomon that is full of vanity. When you get wealth, it doesn't satisfy. You want more wealth, and then you, it brings you worry. Somebody may come and steal my things. Where do I put it? Should I put it in the bank? Or should I put it under my bed? When I put it in the bank, nowadays I may be giving a haircut. If I put it under my pillow or under my mattress, then I worry thieves may break in and steal. So nowhere cool. Vanity of vanity, all is vanity. So why don't we lay treasure where moth, thieves, rust cannot affect it? Treasure in heaven, treasure that is attained by believing in Jesus Christ as Lord. Because of the assurance of the victory of Christ, the, um, because of the assurance of Christ's victory over death, we know that nothing we do for him will ever be wasted or lost. We can be steadfast in our service, unmovable in suffering, abounding in ministry to others because we know our labor in the Lord is not in vain. Let us remember, just as Solomon, in concluding his Ecclesiastes discourse, said in Ecclesiastes 12, I think verse 13 and 14, he said what? We should fear God. We should fear God. Why? Because in youth, life appears as all bright. If there is rain, we know sunshine will come, isn't it? When you are young. When you are old, the pattern changes. When you hear some shrill cry of a bird, you are startled. Hmm? Your body becomes creaky. Your bones are aching. Hmm? If you read um, Ecclesiastes chapter... 12 verse 6, he says what? Remember him before the silver cord is broken and the golden bowl is crushed. The pitcher by the well is shattered and the wheel of the cistern is crushed. 
all this talks about the body that becomes frail, that wastes away. But then, if you are observant, when you put water on fire and you heat it, as it warms up, you see bubbles going up. And eventually, what will happen to all the water if you keep it on fire? It will evaporate. It changes its state. That's what happens when we die. You have a change of state. You are not lost into oblivion, nothingness. The portion of you that when God formed man, he took the dust of the earth and then molded him and breathed into him and he became a living being. When you die, you give up that portion that belongs to the earth and it returns to the earth. Dust to dust, earth to earth, ashes to ashes. But the spirit that belongs to God will go back to God and then you have to render an account. If you were here and you didn't know Christ, you see, you have, you'll be apprehensive. When I get there, what am I going to say? What account am I going to render? But if you give your life to him, if you are covered by the blood, if you are washed in the blood of Jesus. Then, he has told us that he has prepared a place for you. He has told us that those who you can be among the throng of the heavenly host who wait to him because they are the righteous. But, with his blood. May the Lord help us. Though we come in mourning, may we have hope that if we also live life like our sister and Tirofa led, which is worth emulating, that if we submit and yield unto Christ as our Lord and Savior, we will also be found in him so that even though we die, we will live. But if we believe in him, we will never die. If we live and believe in him, we will never die, as John eleven twenty five says. Because he is the resurrection and the life. Amen. In the words of the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, and then being Thank you. you. May resume your seats. We come to appreciate God for the life of our mother, our sister, our grandmother, our great grandmother, our friend, our colleague, and the designer of many edifices that we have enjoyed. We're going to give two offerings, even though we come once. There's something to help buy a handkerchief to dry the tears of the family and then one for the church. The choir would sing, and Auntie Eunice loved to dance. So if you are coming, 
please bring your offering with a dance.
Heavenly Father, we thank you and bless your holy name for these offerings. We ask that it be used for your purposes and sanctified for those purposes. In Jesus' name, amen. We have a short Thanksgiving and commendation service, and we will sing from the Methodist team number 91. We will sing the first two stanzas and the last two stanzas, the first two and the last two stanzas. All hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall. As we give thanks to God, I will call out her name, the, the name of the deceased, three times. And on each occasion, we shall together respond, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Mrs. Eunice Angelina Osefire, thanks be to God. Our beloved Mrs. Eunice Angelina Osefire, thanks be to God. Family member, grandmother, servant of God, Angelina Eunice Osefere, thanks be to God. Please be seated as we pray in 
giving thanks to God. You are worthy, our Lord and our God, to receive praise, honor, glory, and thanks for your great goodness, which sustains us in joy and in sorrow. You are worthy to receive our thanks for the life of our sister, Eunice Angelina Osefere, and the service which she gave to her family, to the church, and for the gift of love which has brought all of us here together as friends and family on this occasion to sustain one another and to witness to the life of Sister Angelina Eunice Osefere. All glory be to you, O God our Father, for sending your Son Jesus Christ into our midst to die for us on the cross, and also for raising him from the dead, that we might know your saving power. All honor be to you, everlasting Father, for the Spirit which teaches and guides us into the truth, without whom we could be groping in the darkness of doubt and fear. To the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be glory, honor, and power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, those who die in the Lord still live with you in joy and peace. We give you thanks for the grace you bestowed upon your servants who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labors. May we, with all who have died in the true faith, have perfect fulfillment and joy in your eternal and everlasting glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Shall we please stand as we commend her soul to the Almighty. Merciful God, you have made us all and given your son Jesus Christ for our redemption. We commend our sister, Mrs. Eunice Angelina Osefere, to your perfect care, mercy, and wisdom. For in you alone we put our trust. Amen. Amen. Let it much in sorrow.
please take your seats. Before the closing hymn and the benediction, uh, permit me to introduce to you uh, the clergy who have officiated at this service and who are present with us. And I want to start right from my right. The preacher for the day has been Reverend Joseph B. Anser. And we thank him for coming. We have our own father who will be pronouncing the benediction. Right Reverend William R. Blankson, first bishop of the Methodist Church, Ghana. And we also have in our midst Reverend Mrs. Jane Constansaki from the Grace Baptist Church, Sakumono, Tema. We also have the Reverend Canon Dr. Shadrach of Usuari of the Freedom Center International and Chairman of what? The Minister's Fellowship International in the UK. That's right, thank you. We have in our midst the Reverend Kofi Ankama Samoa, the Youth Minister of Accra Church. And uh, our own sister, the, the Reverend Stella Benti Enchil of the Anglican Diocese of Accra. Earlier on, uh, Reverend Ojawu was with us, but had to leave for another engagement. I am right, Reverend Samson Kweku Jabin, the Methodist Minister of Accra Church. Thank you all for your patience and for enduring the length of time that we have spent here. I don't know if the, the, the family has any announcements to make. From here, where do we go? Any vote of thanks? Can we take them now before we take the last hymn and the benediction? Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. I stand here as a humble servant of the Amiyao Nsuna Ebusia of Elmina, the Daniels families of Cape Coast, and Elmina, the Saki family of Adansi Winneback. The Sego and Hoyle families of Cape Coast to announce that there will be a private interment ceremony. However, the rest of us are being invited to join at the Fellowship Center for the final funeral rites. On behalf of the allied families and on behalf of the children we express our profound gratitude for having traveled far and near to unite with us in this befitting service and giving our auntie, our mother, our sister, and our grandmother a beautiful farewell. Thank you very much, and God bless you all. Great things he had taught us, great things he had done, and great are rejoicing through Jesus the Son. MHB 313, the closing hymn.
Say we for see you on the resurrection morning. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the Lord that our Lord saved Jesus Christ. The knowledge and love and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Until we meet again. Shalom. Shalom. Amen. I
We shall research in this manner. The clergy will go ahead of the casket, followed by the first two pews representing the family behind the casket, whilst all of us continue to stand as a sign of our last respect until the casket, casket leaves the sanctuary. The recessional hymn is Onward Christian Soldiers, MHB 822.
me.